Ben McKee, Patrick Brown, Go Balls 24-7 here on campus for Tennessee Media Day before fall camp begins tomorrow. Recapping Media Day here with our no huddle. Uh, Josh Heupel spoke. Uh, the man of few words did not say much. Uh, he, he did insinuate that he feels like his, his team is, is healthy going into fall camp and, and noted that the guys who were out or limited in the spring during the summer, they'll, they'll still be cautious with those guys. But uh, Cam Seldon, to me, well, it was the, the noteworthy item from Heupel speaking, saying that he's on pace. And, and he kind of cut his sentence off, but I, I took it as he's on pace to be available for the opener or at least NC State Week 2, the beginning of the season. Yeah, that, that's what we heard from Josh Heupel is that Selden has done a good job in the recovery process from the shoulder surgery he had in spring ball. That was late March, I believe, Ben. Mm -hmm. And so um, he's continued to progress well. I said they are on pace to continue to sort of ramping, ramp him up the workload. Uh, during camp, we'll see when he gets clear for contact. That's obviously the big thing because he's, you know, he can run around this entire time, keep his conditioning up. But your corner, your running back, if you're going to hit on your shoulder. You need that part to be uh, hold up physically throughout the course of the season. But said that they're hopeful he can be back at some point early in the season was the the gist of what Heifel's answer on that was, which was not much of an answer. No, uh, in, in typical Heifel fashion, which is a okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Joey Halsley also spoke, and his was a little more enthusiastic and a little more detailed. He was talking about Brew McCoy uh, and mm. said that he looked like a superhero yeah. out there, which makes sense. I mean, to, to Halsley's point, we all saw that gruesome ankle injury. Yeah. Absolutely disgusting. And now he's out looking like the physical freak that Brew McCoy is, running and cutting and, and doing all the things that receivers do. And uh, Joey Halsley said that he looks like a superhero, and, and the training staff has had it to tell him, like, hey, slow down, let's let's pull it back some. They'll continue to do that, too. I, I think they'll, they'll try to manage Brew through the next few weeks. you got to get some of these guys, you just got to get them to kick off. Um, mm -hmm. you gotta, and that's really something that you've got to do as, as, a, as a football coach as a, and a training staff, strength staff, sports science staff. They're all managing all this stuff to try to manage workloads, and if they see a guy starting to drop off, pull back, they got to get the team to the season fresh, and you got to manage them through the season. But with Brew, Talking to Score White too, they're excited to get him back, see the way he's attacked his rehab and, and worked his way back on the field and have been the leader throughout the entire offseason too. He's a very valuable player to this football team. Yeah, uh, the other thing that stood out to me about Halsey was his comments about the quarterbacks, uh, mostly with, with Jake Merklinger. We all know that Nico is gonna be the starting quarterback and, and I don't think that uh, Joey Halsey was trying to insinuate something with Gaston Moore when he said this about Jake Merklinger, but he said the true freshman, like he's positioned himself to receive playing time. Yeah, uh, they, which I found very interesting because of who's in front of him and him being a true freshman. Right, and, and they like Mark Linger's competitiveness and yes. the way he attacks everything. They saw it in the recruiting process, the way he played basketball. They see it in meetings uh, and, and on the board throughout the offseason. So that's been key for him. With Gaston Moore, I think the big thing that, that Halsey said is that this guy knows the offense inside and out. When he left UCF as a walk-on, they went to go get him because he had been in the system there. So he's what, five years in the system now. He knows it inside and out. And Halsey said, hey, this guy's more athletic than people give him credit for. He can move, uh, he can throw the ball down the field, saw that in the spring game. So uh, for fans that are worried that if Nico's a turned ankle away from the season go down the drain, Tennessee seems to be pretty confident in both his backup quarterbacks. That's always a tough thing. We see a lot in the NFL where the backup quarterback's never able to, to maintain at the level, but you know Tennessee's needed to play and start multiple quarterbacks past two, three seasons. So uh, they need those guys to be ready. Yeah, defensively, Tim Banks spoke and had a lot of great things to say, a lot of about a lot of different positions. To me, the comment that stood out the most was his about Christian Charles, mm -hmm. kind of the forgotten man in the secondary. He's a guy that started as a true freshman and injuries have gotten in the way. And Tim Banks immediately said that he's the X factor, right. uh, which stood out right away. And, and just he's had a lot of bad luck up until this point. Yeah, I think Ryan Callahan on, on our message board uh, at GoVolts 24 7 has mentioned Charles. As, Let's as, not give him too much credit. Yeah, that's true. Some some guy on our board said that something about Christian Charles being a, a guy not to forget about that safety spot. They obviously have got to find somebody next to Andre Turrentine back there. Uh, they think this group's going to be as a whole more athletic. Banks talked about how they've got speed now. He feel like they got some guys that can run back there, which is going to be refreshing. We don't know how they're going to play football, but uh, they like the the cornerbacks they have with Ricky Gibson, Jalen McMurray, and uh, Jermon McCoy. A couple of those guys are transfers that have assimilated really well, but. They've got to find that other safety spot. We know Banks, they don't really, he hasn't really rotated at safety. So if you're starting, you're, you're going to be playing a lot probably. And, and obviously Christian Charles is a guy that they like. As he's coming off an Achilles injury. If he stays healthy, he's got a chance, I think, to help his team. And, and, and that position, as Banks said, will be open during camp for, for, for competition and up for grabs. Yeah, absolutely. Lastly, uh, we spoke to numerous players. Mm -hmm. We'll have all those videos up on the site. We'll also have transcript of Josh Heupel and both coordinators up on the site as well. So I encourage you to go check all out check out all of the interviews that we, we got. 
uh, in speaking to the players, there's no doubt they're making no bones about the fact like the goal is a national mm -hmm. championship. They are not shying away from it. Uh, the, the goal when you ask them is to win every game, it's to win the title, it's to win the natty, it's to win the national championship, however you want to word it, they're not shying away from we think we can go win a national championship this year. No, and they, they think they've got the team and the depth and the pieces to do it, and they think they've got the quarterback to do it too. Talking to Nico Yamaliava for 21 minutes was uh, refreshing. He, he talked about a lot of things. He's up to 215 pounds. Uh, he's had to learn to like breakfast food, which for some of us is hard to imagine because breakfast food is the best, but uh, he said he likes French toast eggs. That's how he's been able to keep and maintain his weight. He looks bigger uh, for, our, for a lot of fans out there that say, eh, he's still too skinny. I don't think that's the case anymore, but uh, I think he's got a really good grasp of this offense. He's got a really good feel for the locker room, and I think he's obviously pretty confident, and there's a lot of belief and uh, confidence in him from the coaching staff through the locker room uh, in Yamaliava, and that's why I think there's a lot of high expectations for this program. Yep, and depth, plenty of depth on both sides of the football. Last note, uh, Wes did speak with Javante Spragans, who's coming off of a knee injury, and uh, Javante claims that he is A-OK. -okay. I'm sure they'll limit him at the beginning of fall camp as well, but uh, Spragans. Uh, big yeah. Guy. yeah, good luck. We'll, we'll, we'll put Wes in charge of pulling that, <laughs> that bull back and, and not allowing him to, to go out there as much as he wants to. He's Patrick Brown. I'm Ben McKee.